Hello everyone, today I want to share with you uh, how I created this hover over menu. And you can see that if I hover over, I go to different locations uh, in this project. And there's also an exit button that I'll create afterwards. First of all, I want to show you around uh, in this project. It's like a Matterport exhibition. Um, I want those locations to be pretty specific. And so I've created these blueprint actors that uh, I can just copy their location information from and apply that to the menu button. There's also a bit of audio. So when you get location uh, close to the location, uh, it'll play. I'm not gonna cover that in the video, but just letting you know when you hear voices, that's why. So when a, a viewer lands here, they can see the portrait, and uh, when they go back and click on the menu, like you saw in the beginning, they can go to a different location, such as this one that has an orbit, this one that has some context information, uh, and then a 3D model. So to set this all up, I first went in, and in my project, I had the content folder. I made a new widget folder inside of that. I really only need these four things. And the first one is to create a menu. So right click, go down to user interface and widget blueprint. And that will make something that looks like this. I named mine WB main menu. And then when you go into it, you'll be in an event graph that will should be blank to start with. And then there's also the designer up here. In here, you create a canvas panel, which you can add to your project and then drag in, which I did. And that looks like this, it's that green area. And then you can drag in buttons, which you can scale, color, do all the things that you normally could do, and then drag text on top of that. And now the text is attached to the button. Um, each button, has an anchor location so you can anchor it in different places um, and right now mine is anchored up in that corner but i could also you know move it up there but it could be anchored in that corner and it could be over here as well it just uh you want all of your buttons to be anchored in the same location so you can see on mine my portrait orbit context 3d model look up and exit are all anchored in that same location so each one of these has a function and I'll show you how to apply that. If you click on that one, such as portrait, you can see here it has an on click function applied. Let's click on the exit one. Uh, that one has an on hovered applied. And the on hovered is the only ones that I can right now get to work for whatever reason in uh, Unreal Engine. So I'm showing the on hovered version, but the process is the same. So if you click on one of these, so the on click function for that button, it'll create one called on clicked and that's an event for that button. And then uh, you'll want a function for quick game. So right click, quick game. And then there's that function and you attach them together. And now that button has the functionality to quit the game. So I'm gonna delete that because I'd already have an on hovered event for the same purpose. So how do I get all of these to have a specific location? So let's go back to the portrait example here. You can see I have um, an on clicked event for the portrait. I could make it on hovered and it will work in VR and it will cast to the VR pawn and it teleports me to a specific location. I'll show you how to set that up in a second, but let's go back and show you what the VR pawn is. The VR pawn is the camera or the VR experience, you know, whatever you're looking through. That's the, the pair of goggles, that's your view. And it's a camera and it comes already in the VR um, template. So if I go over here and if you've opened up the VR template, you will have this VR pawn actor, it's, or sorry, blueprint. And there it is, if I double click it, and you don't have to mess with any of this stuff. 
Well, you probably do later, but I haven't messed with any of it because I'm, I'm totally afraid. The only thing I did change was for the motion controllers. And I wanted there to be a debug line, that red line that shows you where you're clicking, like in the beginning of the video. To do that, I just clicked on the widget interaction. They're already there. They're already part of the VR pawn that's set up for you. So you just scroll down. Um, I make sure that the trace channel is on world dynamic. And then I clicked on show debug line. Compiled and then close that out. That's all you really need to do with the VR pawn. So going back to the menu, we want that pawn to end up in a specific location. We have to make a new blueprint class. So let me come over here and in the content browser, I'm going to go back to my widget folder and I made a BP spawn marker and you just right click blueprint class, make a new actor and then uh, you know give it a title and there it will be. So I'm gonna delete that one out and open up the one that I made. This blueprint actor, really all it's gonna do in my video is give you a location. It's just a location marker. So once you have that blueprint spawn marker made, you can just drag it into your scene anywhere. And this is what I did for the portrait. Let me delete that one and I'll zoom in over here. And for that marker, if you click on it, you can just simply right click and copy the location information. And that's all I was after. Going back to the menu, here we are again. So I have the on clicked event created for that location. And then I did a cast to VR pawn and then a function for teleport. And then I had to add these two here. I'll show you how it works. Let's go to the designer and we're gonna make a new one of these. I'm gonna make a button that's over here. Grab the text. Change its, change its title to test. I'm gonna give it an on-click event. So click the button, there was an on-clicked event. Okay, for this one, we will drag out and go cast to VR pawn. And there it is, cast to VR pawn. This is the same as that. And then we'll need to come out here and teleport, whoops. And I had a hard time finding teleport, even though I typed it in completely. I had to hunt around and there it is, it's a function. And here you could just plug in the values for the location that I showed you right here. But instead I did something a little different. I created a location for it. And for this one, this is gonna be the portrait location and I made it right here. And that's where I put in the information. So this is easy, just click on create a new variable. We'll call this one test, make it a vector. And then if you scroll to the bottom, you can't add the location until you compile. Once you compile, now test, uh, you can paste that. Right click, paste. Now that I have that variable, I can drag it in here. It's a get test location and plug it into that location. If I want additional rotations, so I want the uh, character or the VR pawn to face a different direction, I can just put their rotations in right here, wherever I want them facing. This won't work until you have this get player controller. So right click, get way controller and then you have to come out and go get controlled oops pawn like I have here 
and then you plug that into that object. That one still has an error because we have to add this as a target. Compile, and now we're good to go. So that button we can test out, and we don't have to wear the VR goggles to test it. Here's how we do that. Over in the blueprint for the entire level, we're gonna open the level blueprint and delete anything, and you're gonna recreate this event gameplay. So let me undo mine, and I'm gonna recreate the same thing. Right click, begin. Gameplay, there it is, and it doesn't like to have a second one, so I'm just going to use this one. We're going to do create widget. Then I'm going to link these up. Then I'm going to come out, add to, I'm going to click and add to viewport, and that's going to put it in what we see in our world. So now we need to get player controller and then drag out set show mouse cursor pull this up check that on or set to true whatever and uh, let's connect these up so that's how we can get this working in the viewport I'll compile so we also need to set the return value to target compile oh one last thing we need to do is on that menu we need to select our menu so wb you know that will be our main menu here then compile that error should go away so it knows on event gameplay to open that menu that we just created so again this is not going to be in vr this is just on the regular viewport so if i come in here i click the on the viewport of Kepler. you can see that it appears up there and it's a great way to just kind of test it out welcome to this interactive vr experience we begin with a portrait of kepler okay so i don't want this menu to show up when i'm in vr because it will double up it'll also be in the viewport and in the world i just want the menu to be in the world so i'm going to go back to the blueprint and i'm going to disconnect this this is just for testing So now to add the menu to the actual world. So it's a physical object that we can have maybe parented to the VR pond so it follows our camera around and it's always in view. And we're gonna do it very similar to the uh, location blueprint. We're gonna make another blueprint class. It's gonna be an actor. And we called it spawn UI element. So first of all, when you land in here, you're going to have this viewport view and you'll see the little blueprint object and we need to add this widget. So you'll go up to add widget and it'll be right there. I'm going to take this one out and mine is here and then we can come over to the side and go under widget class and find that menu that we made originally. Mine is the WB main menu and it will attach itself and there's mine with that new button that I created that exercise button and you can scale it rotate it and do all the normal things that you can do in the viewport the other things that you need to set in here for the widget are below you need to have the collision set to world dynamic and it needs to be on custom compile that and now you can drag that menu into the world that's that spawn ui element right there and i can rotate it around i have the menu in here twice now and one's bigger than the other it can scale whatever way it wants to and do all the normal things that you do in unreal and uh so i want to make that menu follow my vr pawn i will Come down here, find VR Pond. With it selected, you can see that I dragged my spawn element 
that object right to it. So I could just drag this one right on top. And now both of those menus are attached. And we're gonna make sure that all of our nodes are plugged in with the on hover event. And now I've created copy. So I literally just copied this one and I put it down here and I deleted the on hovered event, say for the orbit one. I go back in, click on orbit, scroll down. I'm gonna give it an on hovered event. It makes it down here and it says which one it's going to in parentheses. All right, I'll put it in my orbit group and attach it. I make sure that every time I change the orbit location, so that's that blueprint. That was a variable that I created over here and that I added a custom location for. So I can go in, drag that in, and now it's redundant, but it's going to take me to that orbit location in my map. And now it should work in VR. And now it should work in VR preview. I hope this was helpful. I totally don't have this fully developed, but I just needed to keep track of what on earth I did. And uh, please give me some comments and suggestions on how I can improve this. So I followed the instructions on uh, Everflame. He made this great video here, um, teleport, uh, menu teleporter. He does it with a third person actor and I didn't quite go as in depth as he did, but I tried my best. I also followed instructions from Virtus Creative and um, here's how to build the menu and then a little more in depth than I just showed you and how to bring it into the VR space, which I am gonna cover in a moment. The only spot I got stuck on, however, is making it clickable. 